Hi, it's Cara Brown, and this is Watercolor Conversations. It's a place where I share my love of watercolor and my seeking, my teaching, my discoveries, the connections I see, and just in general what it's like to be alive at this time here on planet Earth. I hope that this meets a part of you that's longing to be met. Thanks for being here. Hello, it's Kara. It's early in the morning and I woke up realizing that there was something that was kind of left hanging that was unseen, that was not quite understood or completely articulated inside myself somewhere along the way in my writing that came to me and I wanted to record it while it was fresh. So here you are, you have my voice in the morning and the ideas are kind of blended between two and it's a bunch of C words. One of them is creative confidence and the other one is commitment. So what I have to say today is about this intersection, about the sort of constellation, there's another C word, of these ideas. This whole idea of creative confidence, I was, I was laying there snuggling with my husband, thinking about this series of workshops I have coming up on weekends this summer, and how I might talk about it in an email on Facebook and Instagram posts to invite people to join in and why. And I was thinking about people even who had taken these workshops before who might be interested in coming in again and why they would want to do that. And my thought was creative confidence because the more you paint, the more you build it. And this confidence comes with skill. It does come with skill in that the more you know how it works with the watercolor on the paper, on the brush, on the palette, how you get used to that and how it works. It doesn't mean that you necessarily master it, but you've had it in your experience when there's a lot of water, when there's not enough water, when it's dry, when it's in the middle, when you introduce water onto damp paper, when you don't have enough water on your brush and it doesn't flow out, all of these permutations of the water and where it is become part of your experience so that you can recognize it. Enough of this, enough of this experience, and you can get it all on your own at home or wherever it is you paint, you can do it as long as you're paying your attention to it. You're spending your attention on what's happening when you're using the water and the paint and the brushes. This gets in you as an experience and you understand what happens when, dot, dot, dot. But you can also do it in in community with other artists because there's sort of a solidarity that we have when we are together and all with a purpose that we are working on our paintings and we're all doing it. It becomes part of you. I remember my friend Sue, who was a really new artist when we met. I think she'd painted a little bit in watercolor and she was driving all the way down from two hours drive north to attend workshops on the weekends with me. She also has a home that's far away. You have to get on an airplane to go there. And she was there and I wasn't at hand. And she realized at some point in time along the way that she could paint even if I wasn't at hand. And I celebrated this with her. It was just, it's a milestone, this realization, that we become our own artist, our own maker of watercolor paintings. And whatever happens is going to happen and we can handle it without having someone to ask who has more experience than we do. This is the building of confidence, of creative confidence. So what came to me this morning was it isn't the kind of classic confidence that we think that is aligned with competence as much as it is developing a muscle, 
becoming, if not comfortable, at least accustomed to the being adrift in it and having it go wrong, in quotes, and having it go right even, but mostly the go wrong, (laughs) because that's what we don't want to have happen, and knowing how to handle it, knowing what to do, knowing when to get a piece of paper towel to blot, knowing when to use your brush to lift, knowing all the things that we do when it doesn't go as we anticipated. When you have enough of that in you, you get this certain confidence that you can handle it. And it seems to me that's how confidence works all the time. Because even when we know, we think we know, there's always something that we don't know in life. There's always going to be the possibility for curveballs. Nothing is completely controllable. So we have to call upon this. Even if we haven't actually seen this thing before, we call upon the experiences that we had when we did not know and we handled it. So then there's this whole thing about commitment, this Seth Godin thing. There's a quote from one of his blog posts that he said, great teachers don't teach technique, they teach commitment. And that we spend too much time teaching commitment and focusing on commitment. But without, excuse me, we spend too much time teaching technique and not teaching commitment. And I was left kind of with this conundrum, and I've done a little bit of thinking about it, about what it is to teach technique, excuse me, to teach commitment. (laughs) My mind is a little bit... (laughs) I'm actually not reading anything. I'm completely extemporaneously doing this. So we're getting what we're getting this morning. The idea of commitment, I think, is taught by example. It's taught by invitation, and it has me thinking about a summer-long commitment to paint every day. In 2016, I made the commitment to paint every single day all year, and the year's already underway, and it's too late to do that, but I'm thinking that now is a time for a new, fresh commitment, and we'll do a short one, and I'll invite other people to do it with me. A commitment is a stance, It's a, I'm going to do this. And having creative confidence helps. But also having community and camaraderie, gosh, all these C words, help. One feeds the other. You know, having creative confidence makes it easier to have commitment. And being committed has one put the time in that builds the confidence. And this is how paintings get made. And this is how artists develop. It's the whole enchilada for me. Because then there's the overarching of attention and awareness, which is another whole big subject. That just means presence. That means awakeness. That means I'm here and I'm watching what's happening and taking it in and having it grow me, having it build my capacity to do this thing. So what are you moved to do with your creative life? Do you want to have more creative confidence? Are you feeling called to have a commitment to do this more? I'm going to put it out on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. Those are my social media places. I will say that the summer is going to start on June 1st and it's going to end on August 31st. And I'm making the commitment to paint every single day. We'll see where this goes. We'll see who wants to join in and how we want to share our results as we go along and at the end to see if we've painted, to see if we've grown, to see if we've learned. I anticipate that we will. But in the meantime, we have the rest of May and there's a whole painting that I actually have my elbows on that I've yet to start. It's all drawn out and it's a big creative swing out of a spider web. So that will be shared on my social media sites too. Let's do this. Let's have some fun. Let's build our creative confidence. I'm going to do that with this spider web painting because I have no idea how exactly I'm going to do it, except that I'm going to start. (laughs) And let's commit to what really matters to us in our lives. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, for being along for the ride, for listening, 
for paying your attention to what it is I have to say because your attention is precious and we'll have some fun. Okay, thanks so much. Bye-bye.